morning, First Baptist. I say, say, this is a beautiful sight. Oh, this is a beautiful sight to see so many faces that we haven't seen in a long time. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> there, this is offering time, church. Uh, if you're here today, uh, we're not going to be passing the offering plate, but as you leave, if you could please leave your offering in the back, there's a basket on the table back there to receive your offering. But if you're not here, there's, also, there's five other ways to give. You can mail your offering here to 10600 Watterson Trail, Louisville, Kentucky, 40299. You can drop it off here at the church or through a recurring withdrawal from your bank account. We also have a kiosk in the back of the church that you can also give. Also giving is allowed through the, our church's website, www.fbcjtown.org. Log on, then click Give. And also through the Team app at www.teamapp.com. Log on, then click Giving. Announcements for today are as follows. We want to extend our condolences to our church family that have lost loved ones. Uh, the Weaver family, um, who had just, just lost a loved one, that's Sister Andre Wilson's family, so please uh, keep them in prayer, as well as uh, Reverend and Reverend Gray, um, a family friend, uh, Amelia Faye Durrett, also the Sykes family, Sister Larry Sykes' father uh, passed, and the Hooks also had a passing of an uncle, as well as Sandra Robinson's family. She, they also lost a loved one. So please keep the, all those who have lost loved ones in your prayer and show them in God's way how we love them and we care for them and we're praying for them. Amen. Also, uh, we have a, a list of people who have asked for the church to pray for them. Those names will be shown before and after service as well as through our team app, as, as well as our Facebook page. We have a complete listing of not just prayer requests, but praise reports as well. So please go there. So what's going on here at First Baptist? Again, if you're planning on attending 11 o'clock a.m. worship service, you, you no longer have to call in and leave your name. Just come on. We're, we're here, we're happy to receive you. I just want to remind everyone, we're not trying to be rude or anything, but if you come in and you don't have a mask, the ushers will either give you a mask or ask you to put, you know, f find your mask and put it on. We want to keep everyone safe here. Thank you. Amen. Also, on next Sunday, June 20th, after the 11 o'clock morning worship service, we will be having a vote on our pastoral search committee. Please be in prayer for those being considered for the committee. Their names are in today's At a Glance that just went out this morning. Uh, also, if you're interested in working in the security min ministry here at the church, please contact Brother Wilbur Hooks. His number is 502-494-8250, and this information will also be listed on our website and on our team app as well. Also, if you're interested in honoring your father for our Father's Day tribute, the deadline to submit your information is tonight. Sister Victoria Culberson needs your information by tonight. Also, please take note of the church's uh, calendar of activities for the week. It also will be shown on the screen after church, and you can also find that calendar on our uh, Facebook page as well as on our team app as well. Also, if you've missed Wednesday night uh, Bible study, we now publish the recording on the team app. This is a shameless plug, but if you don't have access to the team app, please contact me. I'll be more than happy to uh, add you to the team app because there's some powerful preaching and teaching going on, guys, and we want you all to, to not to miss those, those blessings. That concludes my announcements for today. May you have a blessed week. Good morning, First Baptist. My name is Kristen Robinson, and I am the ministry team leader for our scholarship ministry. And I want to welcome you to our annual Scholarship Sunday. 
Today, we celebrate all of our students who are receiving scholarships, and we are going to begin by presenting our 2021 high school graduates. And I'm going to ask them to come line up over here as I call their name, and they'll come up to the front and give you a little short description, tell you their name, their high school, what their next step plans are, and their Bible verse. So we have Sierra Fields, we have Ellington Wells, and we have Grace Wilson. My name is Sierra Fields. Um, I went to Louisville Mill High School and I'm going to Western Kentucky University next year for fall. Okay, my favorite Bible verse is you can do like anything with God. I said, with God, anything is possible. That's my favorite Bible verse because it really applies to my life. But that's it. Thank you. My name is Ellington Wells, and I will be attending Pikesville University, and I graduated from Eastern High School, and my favorite Bible verse is Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hi, my name is Grace Wilson. I'm a graduate of DuPont Manual High School, and in the fall, I'm in the fall, I will be attending the University of Louisville, and my favorite, my favorite Bible verse is also Philippians 4.13. Amen. Amen. Good morning, First Baptist. I am Nisa Jones, and I'm a member of the scholarship committee. And it is my pleasure to present um, what is in the gift bag that we give to the students. They're going to receive a gift bag. They're going to receive a um, certificate uh, and a check for $25 from the church. And since we don't have the um, going downstairs to have the reception like we normally do, we're going to give them a $50 gift card to go out to eat with their family, so. I'm not gonna pull all of the items out of the bags right now, but I am going to read the, um, what the items represent in the bag, so. God's gift bag, June 2021, First Baptist Church of Jefferson Town. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, instead, Set an example for the believers through your speech, behavior, love, and faith. And that's from 1 Timothy 4.12. So to the graduates, you're going to have this gift bag. Always let God wrap you in his love. The gift bag represents your body, so honor it and take care of it in a way that is pleasing to him. The next item is a notebook. Have a special place for the word of God. Take note of the way he would have you live and guard it with your heart. There's a box of tissues. Life is not without its trials and tribulations. In other words, you're going to have to cry sometimes. God and those tissues will dry your tears. There's a poncho in the bag. Ephesians 6.11 says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on this poncho as you walk across campus on those rainy days. There is a night light. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. According to Psalm 119, 105. Therefore, keep the light on so that you can follow his path. 
There is a container. I am going to pull this out. Betty Crocker plastic bowl. <laughs> From personal experience, nothing makes a mom happier than sending food with her child back to college whether it's right here in town or far away. Fill these containers each time you go home. <laughs> there is a Sharpie in the bag. Sometimes we make decisions that could be changed later on. Sometimes they are permanent. Choose wisely. There is a little uh, travel size of toothpaste and toothbrush. Psalm 51, 10, 11 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Present yourself clean every morning so that you aren't cast away by your classmates. <laughs> there is a little uh, pencil and pen and scissors container. As God is not the author of confusion, neither should we. Keep organized, and you will always find what you need when you need it. And last but not least, look around this church. See the faces of your parents, siblings, aunts and uncles, grandparents, and your church family members. They have pushed, prayed, sacrificed, laughed, cried, and threaten your way to where you are right now. <laughs> be sure to say thank you and be sure to bless someone else the same way you've been blessed in the future. And there's a pack of thank you cards in that bag and we expect you to use those. Thank you. All right, we will now present our scholarships for 2021. When I call your name, please come up here so that you may receive your certificates and I will read off the scholarships that each student has received. Please bear with us that thanks to the generosity of so many private donors, we do have quite a list. All right, we will begin with Sierra Fields. Sierra is receiving the Sadie Abstain Scholarship for $1,200 from the First Baptist Church. She's also receiving the scholarship from the Adult Men's Sunday School class for $400. The Don D. and Janice Albritton Book Stipend Scholarship for $250. The Floyd Buckner Choir Scholarship for $600, which is in honor of her grandmother her grandmother, Miss Sandra Simmons, who was a longtime member of the Inspirational Choir. It's okay, honey, we got those tissues. And she's also receiving the Gregory and Sandra Robinson Scholarship for Health Professionals for $500, which is also in honor of her grandmother, Miss Sandra Simmons, who was a longtime member of the Health Ministry. Next, we have Ellington Wells. Hey. Ellington is receiving the Sadie Abstain Scholarship from First Baptist Church for $1,200. He's receiving the Adult Men's Sunday School Class Scholarship for $400. The Don D. and Janice Albritton Book Stipend Scholarship for $250. The Johnny and Paulette Bald Book Stipend Scholarship for $500. 
the A. Margaret Moore Scholarship for $250 per semester for a total of four semesters. <laughs> Ellington. Next, we have Grace Wilson. Grace is receiving the Sadie Abstain Scholarship from First Baptist Church for $1,200. The Adult Men's Sunday School Class Scholarship for $400. The Gwendolyn Brazley Scholarship for $500 the Margretta Nash Scholarship for $1,000, and the Denise G. Overstreet Scholarship for $500. And before we move on to our next round of scholarships, I just want to acknowledge the hard work that these seniors have put in that the last year and a half essentially of their high school and you know school experience has really been impacted by the pandemic and it has not been normal for them and they've missed out on a lot of things that a lot of us took for granted during our high school time. So if you would just give them another round of applause. Next, this year we were able to offer a few continuing education scholarships. And the first one is to Kanaya Harris, who's receiving the Reverend Thurman Coleman Senior Scholarship for $500 from First Baptist Church. Next, we have Elijah Arthur, who is receiving the Deacon Frank Weaver Scholarship for $500, also from First Baptist Church. And we have Trinity Wilson, who is receiving the Cedric and Nisa Jones Book Stipend Scholarship for $250 and the Judith Lorraine Perkins Book Stipend for $250. Last year, we were unable to properly recognize our 2020 graduates. We do want to take a moment to acknowledge them. They all were not able to be here, but we had Marsan Blunt, we had Kanaya Harris, we had Noah Courtney, and we had Derasia Payne that graduated last year. Also, every year we have a number of our members and former members who contribute to scholarships for our students, our private donors. We do want to take a moment to recognize them. The Gwendolyn Brazley Scholarship is from the Brazley family, if you would stand as I acknowledge. Thank you. The Johnny and Paulette Bald Book Stipend Scholarship given by Mr. Johnny and uh, Ms. Paulette Bald. The A. Margaret Moore Scholarship, presented by Mr. Michael and Ms. Vanessa Moore. Okay. 
the Margreta Nash Scholarship presented by Courtney Anderson and Terry Williams. And I don't think they're here, but we do have a couple of representatives. Thank you. The Denise G. Overstreet Scholarship presented by Mr. and Mrs. Filan. Thank you. The Don D. and Janice Albritton Book Stipend Scholarship presented by Don D. and Janice Albritton. They have actually moved to Tennessee, but have still become part of our scholarship ministry and have given a private donor scholarship this year. We have the Shedrick and Nisa Jones Book Stipend Scholarship presented by Shedrick and Nisa Jones and family. The Gregory and Sandra Robinson Scholarship for Health Professionals presented by C. Gregory and Sandra Robinson. She's out due to illness. And we have the Adult Men Sunday School Class Scholarship that's presented by the Adult Men Sunday School Class. We have the Floyd Buckner Choir Scholarship that is presented by the Music Ministry. Thank you. And finally, we have the Judith, Judith Lorraine Perkins Book Stipend that is presented by the Scholarship Ministry. And while the scholarship ministry is standing, I want to give them a huge thank you for being my team. This, this is really a team effort and I had to take over this year and if I had to deal with a ministry in the midst of COVID, I am so glad that these were my team members. Um, it, it, they, they made what was a challenging time a lot easier. Um, but I do want to remind everybody that we're able to give these scholarships out because of your tithes and offerings and also your additional giving. So please consider making an additional donation to the general scholarship fund so that we can continue to keep this going. And also think about joining the scholarship ministry, whether your kids have already grown up and done college or they're years and years away or you don't even have kids. We need people to make this happen. Thank you very much for your time.
Amen. 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 Got if you've got any life inside of you, put your hands together and give God some praise in this place. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, if He woke you up this morning and started you on your way, give Him praise in this house. If He's breathing life through you right now, give Him a glorious hallelujah. If you're glad to be on this side of COVID, give God some praise in this house. Hallelujah. I was glad when they sent unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We're in his house. We're in his house. We're in here together. We're in here together. And it's because of what God has done in every one of our hearts. Come on, give a shout unto God in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, what a beautiful sight it is for the saints of God to come together one more time. It is so good to be in this place. We welcome you into this house and we welcome God's presence and what God is about to do in this house. Pray with me if you will. God, we thank you for this moment. You have sprinkled our lives with your goodness, peppered our endurance with your strength. We thank you that no matter what happens in our life, oh God, you are always there. And you've been there for us. Through ups and downs, you've been there. You've been there, oh God. So God, we give you thanks, we give you glory, we thank you for this moment. Now I pray that in this preaching hour that you would bless the words of my mouth that it might, and the meditation of my heart that it may be acceptable in your sight, oh God, our strength and our redeemer. God, more than my words and more than my expressions, more than my gestures, God, I pray that your people would hear your words your voice. We need to hear from you. We're desperate for you. We desperately long for you. So God, speak. Speak in a way that we can't miss it. Speak, Lord. Speak to the center of our being. Speak, oh God. Speak until our heart says yes. Speak, oh God. Speak until our spirit cry out for you. Speak, oh God. For your servants, your children, your family, we're listening to you now, God. We thank you and we praise you for this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite that you would turn in your Bibles to 1 Samuel, the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel. Chapter 16, 1 Samuel, chapter 16. I ask that if there's any lack of energy in this preacher this morning, it's because I just gave my daughter in marriage yesterday. And uh, we had a tremendous celebration and my energy is spent because I danced the night away. <laughs> and great celebration. They're off to Cabo tomorrow and we're praying for the, now she, her name is Rachel Smalls. Jaron and Rachel Smalls, we invite that you would pray for them as they begin their new life together, amen. Look at 1 Samuel 16, listen to the words as we follow along together. The message that I have today is 
for all of us in this room, but it's particularly for our scholarship recipients. Want to share some word of encouragement for you. But it's enough in here for all of us who have gained a scholarship called life to pull some truths out of this teaching today. And so if you would listen to the words, it's a story for many of us. It's a familiar story. And it begins, now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and go. And I'm sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, I got you, man. Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. You know, it's interesting that God only give you so much. The rest of it, you got to trust him for it. Told him direct specifics. And then he said, the rest leave up to me. I'm going to help you along the way. I'll show you what you do do. So you shall anoint for me the one I named to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, do you come peacefully? You better believe they were armed when they came to him. And he said, peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab, must have been the oldest son, and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Mm. Mm -hmm. Keep it going. But the Lord said to him, don't look at the appearance. He hadn't chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shama pass by, and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are these all your boys? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he's out there hanging with the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for I will not sit down until he comes up in here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, rise and anoint him right now, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. Just for a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to think with me from this topic, the oil of authenticity. What pops the cork? the oil of authenticity we gonna talk about what pops the cork it's a very familiar story that we bring to your attention this morning it is the story of the journey of this one called David 
And this is the day that David gets anointed, watch me, as king. He gets anointed in this story as the leader of the children of Israel. And yet, if you know David's story, you know that it's some time before he actually sits on the throne. He's anointed in one season. And then what's manifested by his anointing comes in a later season. I wish somebody would just look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, preparation counts. Because I'm here to report to you that God gets you ready for your assignment long before the assignment comes. God works on you to prepare you for where he has ordained you to be long before you see the position for that ordination. And this is what is happening with David in this story. David is doing what David does. David is helping his father. David was the youngest of all of the sons of Jesse. And the story of David is one that has always been the one who was looked over. Wasn't too much counted on for much except caring for a sheep. He cared for his daddy's sheep. He hung out with sheep, shoveling sheep dung shearing sheep wool, the type of work that is not recommended, that stuff that most people wouldn't volunteer for. The other sons were out doing battle. They were part of the defense force of Israel. The other sons were out doing the things that most in that culture would look at for men to do. Do war, show strength. David is on the hills with sheep singing to God. He's writing music, singing to the Lord. And he's doing it in solitude. He does it by himself. Nobody's around him because nobody wants to smell sheep. <laughs> nobody wants to deal with gnats and other types of insects that you've got to pull out of sheep wool in order for the sheep to be okay. Not too many people want to be working in places and in structures and in spaces where your presence and your work is what's necessary for the survival of others. David is caring for sheep. Look at your neighbor with your Holy Ghost eyes and say, bah. <laughs> your neighbor got wool just like sheep. Your neighbor can only see six feet in front of them just like sheep. It's the wonderful description of the children of God. David was cast out. You remember David's story. You know that when they had a Goliath problem, you'll remember that all of his brothers and the rest of the forces of the children of Israel were afraid of that 10-foot giant. Big dude breathing out cruelties against the God of Israel. And the baby boy comes up taking some lunch to his brothers he can't understand how his brothers and all the rest of the forces of Israel are letting this dude get away with what he's saying about his God. You know, he goes through and asks the leader, asks Saul, what's wrong with y'all? This man's talking about y'all God. Y'all gonna do something, right? They didn't describe, they begin to describe the beam that Goliath has and all the other types of things that causes them to shake in their boots. His brothers shaking in the boots in the face of adversity, shaking in the face of adversity. And David don't know nothing but sheep. He been singing to God, laying on the hills, loving on God, worshiping God. 
And because he loved God so, and God and David had this intimacy that every worshiper needs to have, he couldn't understand how come they would not stand and defend their God against whoever. They were ride or die for God. They said they didn't care. He didn't care who it was. If they're talking about God, I'm going to deal with them. So David said to Saul, let me at him. And he got laughed at. Saul laughed at him. David's brothers laughed at him. The rest of the armies of the children of Israel laughed at him. Because he's the baby boy. He's not supposed to be taking position ahead of the other brothers. What you gonna do, man? You see that big dude? We ain't going at him. What you think you gonna do? You watch how I work. They tried to put on Saul's armor on him, and you know the story that it didn't fit because you can't work with what you didn't work with. You can't work with what you didn't develop some experience with. You don't ever need to use somebody else's armor to do what God has called you to do. I'm gonna say a little bit more about that in this message. Say, I don't need that arm, it's too heavy and it'll slow me down. I'm, I'm, a, I'm quick with feet. I just need just, I need what I have had experience with. I just need just a slingshot and five stones, just five of them. I don't need more than five. And y'all know that all he needed was one. But he needed five. You know why? Because Goliath had four other brothers. <laughs> he said, I got one for you, and I got one for you. Y'all come on over here too, I got one for y'all too. He had a tenacity against his defense against the God of Israel. What I'm lifting up for your attention is greatness is usually discounted before it is celebrated. Hear me. People who see you and judge you for where you are now can't see where God is taking you. And so they have a tendency to judge you on the basis of how you look today when your today won't look nothing like when God actually raises you up. So in this story that I lifted you, lifted before you. It's the similar. Because sometimes preachers can discount you. God says to Samuel, Samuel, you crying all night long. Hey, why are you crying? You crying because I have rejected Saul. Because Saul changed on me. Saul was close to me doing what I've asked him to do, but he decided to do something for himself. And because he decided to do something for himself, he's now distant from me. You can be in the same room with somebody and still be distant. Can I get a witness? And you become distant when you're no longer operating and acting in concert with the will of God. So that's happened with Saul. But Samuel loved Saul because he was the priest assigned to Saul to make sure that Saul had accountable leadership. And at the point when Saul decided that he no longer needed to be accountable to anybody, that's when the Bible says Saul left God. Can somebody in the house say accountability? One of the powerful blessings of God in a collective group is accountability. And that means that as good as you are, as sharp as you are, as smart as you are, as brilliant as you may be, you always need to have somebody looking out for your gift. You always, you always, always, if you are a human being of any slice, you always need somebody that's willing to tell you, look here, you need to hold up. 
You need to put a check on your thinking. I know you got a good square on what you see, but you don't see everything. God says that you're seeing through a glass darkly. You got shades on, and you can't see everything the way you need to see. You need to have some other people around you that have other types of giftings and other types of strengths that can see what you cannot see so that when you go about doing anything in life, you're not there just blind. And whenever I'm just looking with my own eyes, I'm all always blind Samuel you need to dry your tears why are you weeping over whom I have rejected why are you spending your time out of your office no longer operating in your prophetic mantle because you're crying over someone who has rejected me say get up man fill your horn with oil it's time because I have already, according to the text, I've already selected for myself a king. Mm. Did y'all hear that? God said, I already got a king. You just ain't seen him yet. I already got who's coming next. You don't need to worry about a thing. I've got my finger on the one that's going to succeed and lead you where you need to go. You don't need to worry about a thing. I've picked them already. And so he says, get your horn, go fill it up with oil, and get to Jesse's house. He said, go to Jesse's house. There's some boys over there. And I've picked as a king one of those boys that's in Jesse's house. So Samuel dries his turds. Turrs, T R R R S. <laughs> and he goes and walks into to the place where Jesse lives. Now, don't forget what God said. The king is there. And all he tells Samuel is, I've already picked my king. I need you to go to Jesse. That's all I'm going to tell you. God is a good poker player. Play some good spades. And anybody that's good in the game of spades know that you don't ever show anybody your hand. You keep your hand close. Come on now. I know I got some spades players up in this house. Amen. Spades ain't going to send you to hell. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. I know I got some spades players that can do this. I know that's right. Amen. That's just like your God. You're made in God's image. <laughs> he just told him so much. Listen, God is only going to tell you so much. God is never going to explain the whole path to you. God is never going to give you every advanced notice of what to look for when you're going into the, the, into the journey of life. Much of it, you're going to have to just trust him. Can I get a witness in? Is there anybody that have just had, can testify that I made it, not because I knew what was coming, because what came hit me so hard and rocked me to my core, but all I had to do was trust him, even when I couldn't trace him. Sometimes you just, you got to trust him. And I mean trust him when you have no answers. And we're in a generation now that people need answers for everything before they can trust. Well, if you need answers before you can trust, you won't be a Christian for long. We walk by faith, not by sight. And life is too complex. Hear me now. Life is too complex and too complicated and too full of human beings for you to have answers for everything before you go. Sometimes you just got to trust God. Y'all, especially when the financial aid starts getting low and you need, you're trying to worry about the next semester, how you're going to make it, and you don't know how it's going to pull through, and you look at mama and mama said, don't look at me. <laughs> You're simply going to have to just trust God and get a job. <laughs> <laughs> trust.
Trust me. Trust me. It works. All God gave Samuel was, I got a king I've already selected, and I need you to go to Jesse's house. He didn't give him no other directions. If you read the text, he didn't give him no other directions. So that means that when he got to Jesse's house, how did he know what to do? How did he know what his next step was? How did he know that? He got to Jesse's house. He told God, now God, you got to fix it for me because if I go there, I'm the prophet. And folks don't like prophets. I'm the prophet. And I'm going and the king don't know it. Double trouble. Folk don't like prophets. And I'm going outside of the knowledge of the king. You putting my life at risk, God. Got to straighten this up for me. And God says, all right then, let's see. What are we going to do? Here's, here's what you can do. Offer a sacrifice. <laughs> Go into the space of Bethlehem like you're going to church. Be, in other words, he's telling Samuel, Samuel, you don't have to try to figure out your next steps. Just be who I made you to be. I made you to be a prophet. Be a prophet, dude. Be a prophet. Just go in and tell them that you're offering a sacrifice and you're inviting them to come. He's talking about Jesse and his boy. And he does what God says. The Bible says he invites Jesse and his sons to come to worship. He did worship, but he's looking for whom God has selected. He's looking for whom God has picked. So the Bible says that the oldest comes passing. Got the look of a king. Got a king's head. Got all the trappings of height and stature. And the preacher said, surely that's the one. Because he looked the part. Some of us messed up in relationships because we was trying to find someone that looked the part. <laughs> and when you indulge, the part left. God said, don't you pay attention to whatever it is that you did that that's thinking that that's the one. Don't you even pay attention to that because I don't look on the outside like y'all do. God says, I'm not like you. My eyes are not like yours. I'm not looking on anything on the outside. They might be fixed up, tatted up. They might be all good and fixed up and, and hooked up, but I'm not looking at the physical. I'm looking at the spirit. You want to know how to discern who's for you and who's not? Check the spirit out. If you want to know who you can depend on when it gets rough and when it gets tough, check their spirit out. Don't look at how sharp they look. It might look good, but once you get closer, there might be some maggots in the spirit. Because some of us learn in church how to cover up real good. Yeah, we put that Christian cover up on. We can look real nice on Sunday morning and are hellish when we get to the house. Can I get a wit? Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Just sit. Look straight. Look straight ahead. Don't say nothing. Don't, don't, don't say nothing. Just look right up here. Right up here. Don't look at the outside. Your friends are not the friends who always have the best cars or the best clothes. They just may be, but don't you count on that as a friend. Don't count on friends who only help you when you need help. Just because they help you don't mean that they're a friend. They could be helping you because they're expecting something back. And when you don't do that, then their friendship leaves. Can I get a witness in this? Y'all hear all that amen up in there? Y'all hear that? Because they made that same mistake. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Amen. You can't judge people on the basis of outward appearances. And you know where that ha happens most of the time? It happens right here in church. Where we start judging people based on the way they look. If their presentation is not the presentation that we think they ought to have, then we acting funny. We love Jesus until they have a presentation we don't like. 
They don't pay attention to that Samuel. I have not picked him. And the next son came, and the next son came, and the next son came, and he rejected all of God said that ain't the one. Got to the last one that it came to worship. Watch me now, First Baptist. That the, the last one that came to worship. Y'all remember what God said to Samuel? I need you to take a cow and go and sacrifice the cow. Go to church. That's how they worshiped back then. It's just like going to church right now. Go to church. All of the sons that were in the church wasn't the one that God picked. The one that God picked was over there doing service. He was not in the, he didn't get, now he didn't come to church. If they would have invited him, he would have came. If they would have told David that the prophet had come to Bethlehem and he had invited everybody in the church to come, everybody in the family to come, David would have been there. But nobody talks to David. Nobody's paying attention to David. Because David out there with them smelly people. Smelly sheep. The people don't nobody want to deal with. That's where David is. David is with the people that the church folk are uncomfortable being around. That's where David is. And they didn't tell David that the prophet had come so that a king could be selected. But Samuel knew. Because all Samuel knew was God said, you ain't it, you ain't it, you ain't. Listen, it's worth rejecting a hundred to get the right one. For those in the dating game, understand that. <laughs> Amen. It's enough to reject and keep rejecting until you get the right one. Because the wrong one can give you a whole life. Can I get a witness in here of unpleasantries? I'll put it that way. Do you have another son? Now the preacher is meddling now. The preacher is meddling. Uh, is these all your boys? Eh, well, no. We got the youngest one out there, you know, he, he out there with the sheep. You sure he wants it? You want him to come? He gonna be kind of smelly. He might still have some sheep hair on him. You, you sure, pre you a preacher, you're the priest. We, put, we brought our best before you, you sure? Samuel said, I'm not sitting down. Please hear this. I'm not sitting down until he comes. Watch this. Your moment in life waits for you. Get this. If you don't get anything else that I say in this message, get this. You never have to chase anybody for an opportunity. You never have to sacrifice your morals. You never have to sacrifice your principles just so that you can get a job. You never have to sacrifice who God created you to be just so that you can make friends with some folk that will not be standing by your bed if you get sick and close to death. Your opportunity will wait for you. You better hear what I'm saying. You don't have to go around trying to make stuff happen. Just follow the Lord and where the Lord leads. And God is already prepared way ahead of you where you're supposed to be. By the time you get where God wants you to be, your opportunity will be waiting on you. Amen, amen. Your opportunity is waiting on you right now. When you step in the right spot, pow, God's window opens up. And all that God has with your name on it. Do you not realize that the blessing that God has prepared for you, can't nobody get that? Because the economy of God doesn't work like the economy of the earth. You ain't got to compete with nobody for what God has for you. I'm not sitting down, the prophet said. I ain't sitting down till you go get that boy. I don't care how you smell. 
I don't care what he looked like. The Bible says he came up, they brought, they waited, he waited. He waited until David got there. And when he saw David, Samuel didn't say a word. He just got his horn, put it over his head, and the cork popped. So the horn of oil that they anointed had a cork at the top. And the legend of the oil is, is that the oil doesn't flow until it goes on top of the right head. And that's how prophets knew who the right one was. He, the reason how he knew, you want to know how Samuel knew that God rejected it, the others? It's because he put the horn over the first one's head and the cork didn't pop. Went to the next one, put it over his head, the cork didn't pop. On down the line, the cork stayed fixed until David walked up. Ruddy, smelly, sheep smelly, sheep hair wearing David. The one that's laying out in the ground, laying out in the field, singing praises to God, worshiping God. Here comes David, and the horn gets over his head, and the cork pops. And the oil flows. Now, I went all that way to talk about this one quality called authenticity. David was just simply being himself. And because he was being who God made him to be, the oil flowed. There is a quality of your life, hear me, and I'm almost done. I'm going to leave you alone after I tell you this. I got three points and I got all this stuff. I ain't studying it right now. I got to talk to these kids right now. I want to tell you something, that there's something that the earth needs that only you have. It is your authentic self. Everybody in the world is copying off of everybody. And we hardly see authenticity. But authenticity means that you are at home with who you are. No, it don't mean that you don't have issues. You got plenty of them. It don't mean that you don't have any uh, 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 errors of character you got some it doesn't mean that you might you won't make any mistakes you're gonna make a whole lot of them but what it means is that even through the good and the bad you are who god made you to be and if you live authentically hear me hear me hear me please if you live and make a commitment to God to live authentically who god made you to be the world can't stop your blessing the world will make a beaten path to your door if you are authentic with who God made you to be. Can I get a witness in this house? Listen, if you spend your next years after graduation and end into college or in a trade or whatever God leads you to be, trying to be somebody else, the world already got that. They don't need a duplicate. You need to be genuinely who God made you to be. To live authentically is to live who you are. That's what David did. He lived who he was. Everybody else was scared of Goliath, but David said, I ain't scared. And if I got to die, I'm going out swinging. Y'all know that was David's personality because David was a fighter. David was a fighter. He would fight before he prayed for you. And he lived his personality, genuinely, who he was. Life will take you, God will take you where you need to be when you make the choice to live who you are. It's worth the work discovering that. It's worth the work looking in the mirror and determining this is what I like, this is what I don't like. This is who I am. This is what gives me joy. This is what I cannot stand. 
and not have to compromise that for in it. I don't care how good they look. I don't care how much they promise you. I don't care what they pre present to you. Be at home living who you are. Before I leave this point, I got to tell you that who you are is connected with who you're connected with in family and friends. For we are not individuals to ourselves, but we are because of everybody who has invested in your life. You've had a long journey of people who have invested in your life and all of that investment has worked to shape your character. Live authentic to your character. Secondly, authenticity means not only living who you are, but man, you need to love who you are. If nobody else like you, you ought to like you. And your liking you ought not be determined on the fact that other folk don't like you. So what they don't like you? So what that they can't stand you? So what that they leave the room when you walk in the room? So what if they doing all kinds of talking about you? You ain't got to prove nothing to nobody anywhere ever. You don't ever have to walk in the room wondering, am I liked? Am I loved? Do you want to know if you love? Come back home to First Baptist. They'll tell you real good about how much loved you are. But authenticity says, not only do I like living me, I love being me. So happy being me. I won't. I'm regretting nothing about me. Y'all know that song? Y'all acting like y'all don't know no Angela Stone. Love who you are because you were created that way. That's number three. You were created the way you are. And number four, you were created by a God who knew exactly what he needed in the earth to be accomplished final thing I'm going to tell you is this, young people, all the details of your personality fits your purpose. You hear, you hear? Every minute detail of your personality fits your purpose. So you can't be compromising who you are trying to be like somebody else because the other person don't fit where God's taking you. In every aspect of who you are, God has already prepared a puzzle piece for your gift. And when you arrive at that place, God is going to want to put you in place so that the universe can spin. And if you're busy trying to be like somebody else, you will miss your moment. And the moment that I'm telling you has nothing to do with cash because God got a whole lot of that. It ain't got nothing to do with possessions because God owns a cattle of a thousand hills. He can get you what you need to have. But what I'm trying to tell you on this scholarship Sunday is that as you go forth in life, Make the commitment to be authentically who God made you to be. The best way to get that started is to live a life of total surrender to Jesus Christ. That's the beginning. That's the doorway to authenticity because the authentic one saves us so that we can live authentic lives. Pray with me if you will. Sometimes, God, we are deceived by the evil one because the evil one is described as the father of lies. That means that he brings into our life deception. And we're deceived into thinking many times. Not only our students in the room, but grown-ups get deceived about who we should be, who we are, 
foundational questions about life. And David teaches us today. Don't try to be like your brothers. Don't try to be like your sisters. Be who God made you to be. There are some grown-ups in this house that need to hear that message, God. There are some folk who don't have any peace in their heart right now because they're busy comparing themselves to other folk. And in that comparison, God, they're feeling neglected. They're feeling left out. They're feeling ostracized. They have all of these feels about them because they're busy comparing themselves to others. And when they compare themselves to others, oh God, they're saying to you, God, I don't like the way you made me. I don't like, you're, well, I'm not enough and therefore you didn't do enough, God. Why didn't you give me this gift? How come you didn't give me that opportunity? How come it seems like everybody that hates you is getting all the good opportunities and here I am languishing in this spot? God, we put so much on you when we haven't really accepted who you've made us to be. Authentically, being who you created us to be. God, somebody watching this service that's gonna be listening to this service is in a struggle for their life right now. Deep sadness has taken over their heart because they feel incomplete in one way or another in the midst of the fact that God your hand is upon them and I speak to that spirit right now I speak to that person I decree unto that person hear the voice of the Lord I have not changed my mind about you I have not run out of blessings for you I need you to instead of looking at what is not in your life look at what already has been provided Someone, God, is in a state of such pain in their heart. They look in the mirror and they don't see or feel that they are enough. That something is missing. A dream has not been reached. A goal has not been accomplished. And they feel less than. They feel like life is missing them, passing them by. Lord, I pray, touch them right now in Jesus' name. Speak to them right now, God. And let them know my hand is still on you. I have not lifted my hand off of you. I still have you on my mind. And I still have a mission for you to do. God, if there's someone that has not accepted Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior, God, speak now. Move up on their heart right now. I pray that from this message and from this worship experience, that they would hear your voice and come and surrender to you. Let it be possible. Let it be so. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, put some hands together. Bless the Lord in this house. Would you all stand with me? as we prepare to extend the invitation for discipleship. Let me say something, the world seeks authentic people. You can't love not being authentic. Love doesn't work with inauthenticity. Love doesn't work if I'm not genuinely who God made me to be. It blocks the free flow of love when I'm not authentically who I am. And at some point, my friends, your authenticity has got to be taking off the block where people can pass judgment upon it and you pay attention to that. Come on off of that and make it up in your mind through Jesus Christ. I will be who God made me to be. It begins with a life in Jesus. The doors of the church are open and the hands of Christ are extended unto you. Simply salvation begins with your surrender. I surrender to the will of God. I surrender to the 
will of God for my life. Just a simple prayer. God, come in to save me. Come into my heart. Make me the person that you want me to be. I want to live authentically who you called me to be. Cover me by your blood. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that on the third day he rose with all power in his hand. I believe that he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in Jesus Christ and I receive him as my savior. When you make that prayer, we'll be glad to receive you into the house of the living God. If you're watching, if you're by live stream, we have a contact section on our website. Go there and please share with us your decision to give Jesus your heart. You can do that also if you're listening to this during the week, our radio broadcast, go to our website or call our church office. Let them know that I gave my heart to Jesus and they'll be glad to share with you next steps. Amen. 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 Congratulations to those scholarship recipients in the house. Congratulations. Let's receive the benediction. All hearts clear. All minds regulated. Let's pray. God, thank you for what we've received. Now, God, lead us into faith. We won't know all the answers, but we have faith. We won't know what tomorrow brings, but we have faith. We'll have good bad days and bad days, but we have faith. Keep us together, God. Keep us strong. Keep us faithful. And keep us authentic. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and may the good Lord give you his peace. The peace that passes all understanding. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and all the people of God said together, Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day today.
hope you were blessed by this worship experience. If you need prayer, consultation, or have a desire to become a member of the First Baptist Church of Jefferson Town, please call the church at 502-267-6121. Remember, love is the First Baptist way. Be blessed. <laughs> 